Welcome to our video, Japan and the World. The topic for this time is, Reforming the Pentagon's Budgeting System. Can DOD and Congress strike a deal? I would like to briefly focus on the critical questions, August 22, 2023. By Mr. Mark F. Kansian, a senior advisor with the International Security Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C. Question 1. What is the Pentagon's budgeting system? The Pentagon's budgeting system is called the Planning, Programming, Budgeting, and Execution System, PPBES. The Department of Defense, DOD, defines it as follows, the PPBE shall serve as the annual resource allocation process for DOD within a quadrennial planning cycle. Programs and budgets shall be formulated annually. The budget shall cover one year. And the program shall encompass an additional four years. Robert McNamara established the system in 1962 to ensure that decisions were resource-informed, decision-makers had access to objective analysis, and the outier implications of decisions were shown. Previously, the military services had developed one-year plans virtually independently. A full cycle takes about three years to complete. It begins with a planning phase that examines that year's key strategy questions and produces the Defense Planning Guidance, DPG, for the services and defense agencies. That transitions to a programming phase, which translates capabilities into specific programs and forces. The budgeting phase assesses pricing and executability. DOD then sends the budget to Congress as part of the President's annual budget proposal, generally early in February. Finally, once Congress enacts a budget and DOD begins execution, an execution phase assesses whether programs are operating as planned. The process is comprehensive, involving every element of DOD. From local commands to the military services and agencies to the Office of the Secretary of Defense. Although Congress has established certain organizational structures, funding controls, and report requirements, PPBES is not established by law but by DOD internal directives. Thus, DOD has considerable latitude in making changes. Though these must gain acceptance from multiple stakeholders, including Congress, which has the final say. Question 2. Why is there criticism? Although there have been many tweaks and a few substantial changes over the years, the system remains fundamentally the same. As a result, it has been characterized as an industrial age process, unsuited for 21st century government. The criticisms are fourfold. Criticism 1. The process takes too long. Nearly three years from initiation to the end of budget year execution. Although there are feedback loops and opportunities to make changes, a lot can happen during that time to change budget needs. Criticism 2. The process cannot deal with rapidly evolving technologies like software and artificial intelligence. Criticism 3. The system is biased toward existing weapons and technologies because the many hierarchical reviews make the system risk-averse. Criticism 4. The process is labor-intensive. Dozens of agencies and thousands of personnel participate in driving the budget along its three-year journey. Question 3. What is the commission? These criticisms drove Congress to create an independent commission on planning programming, budgeting, and execution reform in the fiscal year 2022 National Defense Authorization Act. The Commission's purpose is to examine the effectiveness of the planning, programming, budgeting, and execution process and adjacent practices of the Department of Defense, particularly with respect to facilitating defense modernization. The 14 commissioners are classic Washington insiders with deep personal experience in PPBES as senior officials in the Pentagon. The military services are Congress. Consistent with the statute, none of the commissioners are currently employed by the federal government. 
However, the insider aspects engendered some criticism. The Center for Defense Information dismissed the commission as it began because many commissioners had jobs in defense industry, in a room full of people with glaring conflicts of interest. It is impossible to meaningfully reform an acquisition and budgeting system in a way that benefits the troops and American taxpayers. However, commissions need insiders with deep knowledge of the subject matter who can fix problems rather than outsiders who can admire them. People with deep experience in defense budgets and programs tend to stay in that profession, but that means they will likely have some linkage to industry, however tenuous. The commission notes that it held 29 formal in-person meetings, interviewed over 560 individuals, and had 15 engagements with professional staff from the congressional defense committees. It has engaged research by several federally funded research and development centers and academic institutions. Question 4. What is the commission's approach in this interim report? The report eschews the breathless rhetoric of broken systems, national peril, fundamentally changed national security environments, or villainous opponents of change often seen in commission reports. Instead, as a result of the commissioner's backgrounds, it recommends many specific improvements and notes that the commission is considering a few major changes. Overall, the Commission found that the PPBE process serves a critical role in identifying key budget issues, enabling senior leaders to guide the course of the department, and developing consensus proposals that can be defended before Congress. However, almost everyone the Commission spoke with, even those praising aspects of today's PPBE process, agrees that changes are needed. This approach may disappoint some critics who would junk the current system and institute something completely different. However intellectually satisfying that might be, the chances of starting from scratch are essentially zero given the immensity of the task, it allocates 3% of US GDP and the hundreds of stakeholders. As think tank scholars Thomas Spoer and Frederico Bartels put it, the Commission's recommendations should apply to the existing system. It cannot, nor should it try to, develop a clean sheet design supported by an ideal financial management system. If the Commission organizes itself around the idea that it should completely abandon the current system and rebuild from the ground up, it will immediately consign its final report to the graveyard where Blue Ribbon Commission reports go to die. Question 5. What specific actions does the Commission recommend? The report makes recommendations in five areas, PPBE-related relationships between the DOD and Congress, PPBE processes to enable innovation and adaptability, the alignment of budgets to strategy, PPBE systems and data analytics, and DOD programming and budgeting workforce capability. Note that DOD uses PPBE to refer to the general topic of planning, programming, and budgeting, and PPBES to refer to the formal system. PBBES-related relationships between DOD and Congress. Although PPBES is an internal process, Congress has the power of the purse. Therefore, its views and participation are critical to establishing a budget. Indeed, the report goes out of its way to show how both sides, executive and legislative, have problems and need to take action on reform. PBBE processes to enable innovation and adaptability and alignment of budgets to strategy. The report lists these two separately, but they are closely related and constitute the core of the Commission's recommendations. Although these issues have little visibility to those outside of government, they are of immense interest to people in government and should be of interest to the general public. They answer the question of who gets to decide which issues and, ultimately, what gets funded. PBBES Systems and Data Analytics DOD has many obsolete and fragmented business systems because of their low priority for funding and the difficulty in getting organizations to agree on change. 
Yet improving business systems is not just a good government effort. It increases visibility so more stakeholders can participate more easily. And it increases efficiency so the process can be conducted with fewer people. With 50,000 civilian and military personnel working primarily in financial management, even small improvements in efficiency can yield useful personnel savings, improve DoD programming and budgeting workforce capability. With so many commissioners coming from the programming, budgeting, and financial communities, it is not surprising that they are sympathetic to workload issues. Of all OSD program and budget positions, 12 to 18 percent are unfilled. Continuous budget crises, from the need to support Ukraine to hedging against prospective government shutdowns, prevent the staff from getting training, leave, or a reasonable work-life balance. Question 6. What happens next? DOD's leadership recognized the interim report, saying it would implement the actions it could. However, there were no specifics. Congress has not reacted. The Commission's final report is due March 2024. For that, the Commission will need to make its toughest decisions, particularly about budget structure. For every winner, there will be a perceived loser, even if there is a net benefit. Increasing flexibility and agility often means pushing authority down in an organization. That sounds reasonable and aligns with many management concepts. But it means that powerful institutions and senior personnel give up authority they have become accustomed to. In this case, the authority resides in Congress and OSD. Critical to the success of the reform effort will be whether these two organizations are willing to delegate some of their authority. That's all, just briefly focusing on the critical questions. August 22, 2023, by Mr. Mark F. Kansian, a senior advisor with the International Security Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C.